guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So today I'm going to talk to you about a little topic that I mentioned the other day when I did a Q&A video. And a, a question was asked about how we control pests in the garden, considering we like to do things organically. Now because there's a lot of things that go into that, I said that I would um, do a dedicated video just on pest control and, and some of the things that we do. To manage that and so that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. So basically pest control in the garden when you are trying to avoid things like pesticides uh, pretty much boils down to three different techniques. There might be a few others out there but these are the three primary ones and this is what we do. So number one you have the hands-on method. Uh, every morning when I go out and I water and I check on the garden, I'll actually walk out there with a jar, like an old spaghetti sauce jar or something like that. And I'll fill it about halfway with water and I'll have a lid for it. And I will walk through the garden and if I see a bug that shouldn't be there, because there are good bugs, so if I see a bad bug, I'll actually catch it and I'll throw it in the jar and put the lid on it. And so I will do that as I go through the garden. Any uh, adult bugs that I see here or there, I'll just snatch them, throw them in the jar, and then later in the day when the bugs are all dead, I just dump the jar out for the chickens and let them have a snack. They enjoy that. So that's one method, but in reality, going through and picking off one by one every harmful insect that can get in your garden is just not reasonable. So there's two other methods that we use to help control the pests. Now one of them you have to kind of plan ahead for and that's companion gardening. Companion gardening is where you plant certain plants together, uh, coexisting with one another for beneficial purposes. For instance, nasturtium is a flower, it's a beautiful flower, it's also an edible flower, it has kind of a, a peppery taste to the blossoms. Um, nasturtium is a plant that a lot of insects do not like. So when you plant nasturtium around things like squash, um, honestly, I'll plant it here and there throughout the garden because why not? It's beautiful, it attracts the pollinators, and it helps repel some of the bad bugs because they just don't like nasturtium. Um, maybe it's because the name sounds like nasty in the beginning. I don't know. Maybe the flower's nasty to bugs. But nasturtium is one of the things that's very beneficial, as well as marigolds, French marigolds. You can plant those around your garden beds. So there's several different kinds of flowers that you can plant. But then there's also things that you can plant for a different reason, not necessarily as a repellent, but as an attractant. And you might think that sounds crazy. Why in the world would you want to plant something that's going to attract bugs to your garden? You're not attracting the bugs to your garden. Chances are they're probably going to find your garden anyways. But when they find the garden, 
they find your tomatoes, your peppers, your cabbage, and all of that, why not have something very close by that they might like better than your tomatoes and cucumbers and squash and everything else? So things that you would put in the ground around your garden to serve as a bait to get the harmful insects away from your garden plants are called trap plants. It's a specific type of companion gardening. And those trap plants are plants that are going to be very, very tempting and appetizing to those bad bugs. Sunflowers can be that. We plant a lot of sunflowers. I do simply because I think sunflowers are beautiful, cheerful flowers. I love the height. I love the drama of the, the big, tall sunflowers. But also, some of the bad bugs are attracted to those sunflowers. And by planting those near the garden, you can kind of draw them away from your tomatoes and everything else. Another very beneficial trap plant is called Blue Hubbard Squash. Now, it can be kind of difficult to find. I have seen it at my local farmer's co-op. They have the little baby plants that you can get in the little flats and plant them around your garden. Now, Hubbard squash is an edible squash, and you know you may enjoy eating it, but those insects are going to enjoy eating it even more. And with the Hubbard squash, you know you can plant rows of this around your garden, and all of those squash beetles and everything else that do so much damage are going to just swarm to that Hubbard squash, you've basically got two choices. Number one, you can just let them have the Hubbard squash, let them live over there and do their thing and devour the Hubbard squash while leaving your garden away. Or another option that people will do is once those bad bugs are all over the Hubbard squash, they go ahead and spray the Hubbard squash with the bug spray. That way, the bug spray is over there on the Hubbard squash that they're not going to eat, and their garden itself is left alone. So that's another option. And then the third option for pest control comes down to bug spray. Now there's a lot of different kinds of bug spray out there. I actually have one here. Now this one here is a store-bought one. It is safe for organic gardens. It says it right here. You can spray this on your edibles even up to the day of harvest. So the very day you're going to pick everything, you can spray. It handles aphids, mealybugs, mites, leafhoppers, ciliids, scale insects, thrites, white flies, and other listed pests and you can use it on all sorts of stuff. I picked up this bottle at my local Lowe's and I've seen it at other stores as well. And so this is one of the options. Now besides going to the gardening section at your local store, you can also make your own bug sprays right at home. Over on cosmopolitancornbread.com, my website, I posted an article last week that went through three different recipes for your own homemade bug spray and I, I explain how each one works and how to make them in the article, and I will link that down below or put it up here in a card if you are watching this on the YouTube channel. And that way you can go ahead and find those recipes and make them. These are all recipes I've used myself and have had very good success with. You can make your own for pennies, practically. Very inexpensive, and it works, and it's safe, and you don't have to use pesticides. So those are the major ways that we use for controlling pests in the garden. We have the hands-on, we have the companion planting, and then we also have the natural bug sprays. But there is a fourth way that we do try to help control the pests, and that's by inviting insects in. By having beneficial insects, do your homework in your area and see what insects live in your area that are beneficial, like um, praying mantises and ladybugs and things like that and see what it takes to get them to come into your garden. What are the things that they like and encourage them to live in your garden. If you use pesticides, not only are you going to kill the bad bugs, but you're going to kill the good bugs too and you don't want to do that. So I hope that helps you out and answers all of your questions. If any of you have any other tips, 
on controlling pests in the garden, please leave them in the comments down below and help another gardener out. So thanks for watching you guys. My name is Constance. This is Cosmopolitan Cornbread and I will talk to you all next time.